We have multiple bright regions on the Earth-facing disk from two different solar cycles, and a meteor almost hits the ground in Southern California. Those stories and more in the news this week. This forecast, sponsored in part by Eric Johansson. Check him out at Instagram.com slash Scoobist. Space weather this week definitely remains a bit on the quiet side. As we flip to our front side sun, you can see we actually do have a couple bright regions on the Earth-facing disk, despite the fact that we're knee-deep in solar minimum right now. The interesting thing is that the biggest of these regions, this was region 2749, it did emerge as a sunspot for a short while, and now it's kind of dying out slowly and diving back below the surface. But that was a cycle 24 sunspot. The other really notable thing is that we got two highlights latitude bright regions. Now these did not become sunspots. They didn't get bright enough and strong enough for it. However, they had solar cycle 25 polarity. So this is one of the few times we've ever seen cycle 24 sunspot and two cycle 25 sunspots in each, pol each hemisphere all at the same time. So this tells us that the sun is definitely getting much closer to starting solar cycle 25, so we are watching it with bated breath. Now switching to our backside sun, you can see it's been pretty quiet on the sun's backside as well. Now we do have a coronal hole that's going to be rotating into Earth view here in the next few days, probably three or four days, and in about two weeks or so it could give us a small solar storm, but until that happens, things are going to continue to be pretty quiet. Switching to our moon, we have passed through the first quarter phase and we're on our way to a full moon, with a full moon being on the 13th. And you meteor watchers, I know you need to compete with a full moon, but just the past day, we saw a huge meteor. It was caught on a dash cam in Southern California where the meteor almost hit the ground. And we've had reports that people saw this particular meteor uh, it, both in Illinois and clear up in Ontario. So it was seen over many parts of the Northern Hemisphere. And this is most likely due to the Draconids that are actually peaking now and the Southern Taurids that will be peaking over the next day or so. So if you get a chance, even though you have to compete with that full moon, maybe it's worthwhile to take a look at the night sky. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we do have a remnant coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, but don't expect it to give us all that much. At high latitudes, NOAA is only expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 20% chance of a minor storm. And at mid-latitudes, well, it's even worse. We're looking at normal to unsettled conditions with only about a 5 to 10% chance of active conditions. Now, we have been bumped to active conditions for a very short while here over the past day or so, but don't expect it to do all that much. So your aurora photographers, if you're at high latitude, you might get some sporadic shows, but you mid-latitude uh, aurora photographers don't expect a lot until uh, easily this week passes, and then we have a chance when a larger coronal hole will rotate through the Earth strike zone and give us a bit better chance for some more aurora. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week. Well, unfortunately, region 2749 has fizzled and it's kind of dimmed quite a bit. That's why it's in parentheses here. It has lost its designation as a sunspot as it kind of disappears beneath the sun's surface. And we are now back to a spotless sun. And unfortunately, that means that you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you're dealing with solar flux that's in the high 60s. We have poor radio propagation on Earth's day side. The only people who are happy about this are the GPS users. That's why all this stuff is in the green. When it comes to solar flares, we have no risk for radio blackouts, and GPS reception on Earth's day side should be pretty top-notch. But this is just the way it is at solar minimum, and these conditions will easily continue through this next week as we don't see any bright regions on the sun's backside either. Now, also because we're at solar minimum, the cosmic ray flux is uh, a bit more intense than it normally would be, so you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. 
So the space weather this week is definitely remaining a bit on the quiet side. We do have a remnant coronal hole that is rotating in through the Earth's drag zone, but it's not going to bring us all that much of a disturbance. So your aurora photographers, unless you're at high latitudes, I would pretty much sit this one out. Even at high latitudes, your views are most likely going to be a bit sporadic and won't last all that long. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, I know the solar flux on Earth's day side looks pretty bad and propagating is pretty dismal but we did have two bright regions on the earth facing disk at high latitudes both in the north and the south that had solar cycle 25 polarity this means that the sun is actually getting a bit more organized when it comes to its field what we call flux emergence this is a good sign that cycle 25 is definitely getting a bit closer eventually these suns these little bright regions are going to turn into sunspots and wow then activity is really going to light off so even though the news is and all that great some of us you know in the in the know that, that look at the sun a lot know that some good news is coming out of this so just hang in there i swear solar cycle 25 is coming now as far as your gps users are concerned well you should be pretty happy this week we have low solar flux we have only mild disturbances when it comes to uh, solar wind and this means that your gps reception both on earth's day side and at low latitudes even on earth's night side should look pretty top notch I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.